We are back with a brand new video, and yes, the Miami Heat are now 0-2 to start off the 2022-2023 season. Um, as y'all can probably tell, I am pissed, um, as you guys probably all are right now, because, man, um, I don't remember, you know, the last time we were 0-2 uh, since we got Jimmy. I don't think we were, we've were ever been 0-2 since we got Jimmy, but maybe I'm wrong, but... Uh, this is definitely the worst start to a season that we've had since we got Jimmy and um, Yeah, man, it's just very frustrating. You know a lot of things did not go our way tonight um, A lot of questionable decision-making in my opinion. I thought, you know, the rotations weren't really the best and um, We did have our moments where we locked in especially defensively and we were able to close the gap on the game and make it a tighter affair, but um, unfortunately we could not sustain that pressure and uh, we kept letting Boston make these runs to extend the lead. And at the end of the day, it was just too, too, too little, too late. Like the lead was just too big. And we couldn't, we didn't really have time to cut it down to a single digit uh, deficit in the fourth quarter. So, um, yeah, once, you know, five minutes in the fourth quarter was left, I had some hope because I think we had cut it to seven. And then they made another run, extended it to double digits. And, yeah, like then from from then onwards, it was just like a big mountain to climb, and um, I kind of knew it was it was over. Like when there was like two two minutes to go, but um, yeah, make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure you guys are all frustrated like I am. So, any thoughts y'all have on this on this performance, man? Just, just let me know down in the comment section below, and um, and yeah, I, I will be you know looking forward to seeing your thoughts. I'm pretty sure we're all gonna have similar thoughts, but. Um, yeah, just let me know down in the comment section below. Um, first of all, you know, I did see um, an improvement. I do I do want to give a couple of guys credit because I think Bam Adebayo and Kyle Lowry, both of them had uh, really good bounce back games. Um, and I know it's very hard to talk about positives in, 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 a, in a game that we just lost. But, you know, um, for, for two players who did not play that well in the first game, Bam, I had a feeling it was going to bounce back because, you know, a lot of the shots he was missing in game one were very makeable and um, I expected him to make it sooner or later. Um, Lowry, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know when the bounce back was going to come from Lowry, but, um, you know, from game one to game two, it was night and day. You know, he was just doing a lot of things on the court that were really helping us win. Uh, I really liked his defense. Um, you know, he was guarding up a lot and he was holding his own against bigger players. Um, and I also, you know, like the fact that he was making his shots tonight. I think he made three threes, like he got to the free throw line. You know, this is the Kyle Lowry that we have to see uh, consistently. You know, this this is what we're, we are paying him 30 million a year for. So um, this is what I expect from Kyle Lowry. I expect him to, to do, you know, and, and produce similar type of performances each night and hopefully we get that from him um hero also had um he had a really good second quarter and third quarter but um after like early in the third i think he got subbed out and then he didn't get subbed back in until a little bit later um and he couldn't really find his rhythm so he didn't score after like a certain amount of time until like the fourth quarter garbage time but um yeah he had a good second quarter jimmy had his 16, four and six or whatever it was. Um, the thing about Jimmy is he's not gonna go 100% in the regular season. And I think we just have to accept that because playoff Jimmy is not gonna arrive until the playoffs. And that is very disappointing to me. Um, but I also get that we do have to preserve his body and make sure that he's not exerting himself too much. But you know, this is what we're gonna have to deal with. You know, 80% of the regular season, Jimmy Butler is gonna be coasting. And we're gonna have to make sure that we're winning games, um, even with, with with him coasting. And if we if if he if we ask Jimmy Butler to play like how he does in the playoffs every regular season game, you're not gonna get the same version of Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. So um, I can understand why he's not you know why he's coasting, but uh, still you would like to see a little more aggression from him. Um, and then Gabe Vincent, I thought, deserves a lot of credit, especially in the fourth quarter, as far as how he defended. Um, he made a couple of shots. He looked really good um, in the fourth quarter. And, you know, um, closing out the game, I really like that lineup uh, because we, we forced a lot of turnovers, offensive fouls on them because we were really getting into them. And I thought that was a big positive. Um, but moving on to the negatives, because there were quite a few. Um, offensive rebounding is still a big issue. 
Um, and that is not us offensive rebounding. I'm talking about us on the defensive end and, 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 the oppo- and the opposing team getting offensive rebounds every time. Like, that is a big issue. It happened against the Bulls. I think Vucevic had 17 rebounds. I don't really know how many rebounds the guys on the Celtics had. I don't have the stat sheet put, pulled up in front of me. But, um, like, you could just tell every time the Celtics missed, like, there was always a body getting an offensive rebound for them. And it's like, you know, we can we can win these games, bro. Like, we could have won. We could be 2-0 right now if, if we didn't allow half of the offensive rebounds that we did. Like, it's so deflating for a team because we had moments where we played really good defense. And they got the offensive rebound. It was like, bro, we just played all that defense for nothing, basically. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was very, very frustrating. You know, we were just getting... Um, we were getting mauled on the glass, man. And it's like um, every time Bam Adebayo was not in the paint, like, you know, it was we had to do it by committee and we weren't doing a good job because even like Grant Williams had a couple of offensive rebounds. Brogdon had a ton. Brogdon was just getting, I don't even know how many Brogdon had, but it seemed like every time they missed a shot and Brogdon was on the court, he was always just getting one. Brogdon's what, like, I know he's a bigger guard, but he's not a big. So I didn't expect that to happen. Um, And yeah, even like, they just had a ton of offensive rebounds. That, that was that was the number one thing that really frustrated me. It was the rebounding. Uh, we were just very small out there, man. Like, I love Caleb Martin. I, I tweeted this. Caleb, he's really good um, at what he does, which is play with intensity and um, cut to the rim and all that other stuff. But, you know, he was really a non-factor tonight. And it's like, bro, like, on the defensive end, last, uh, last game he was getting taken to school by DeRozan. This game he didn't look that great either on the defensive end and then him being 6'5 like on the glass that really hurts a team because you know he's such a small uh four um and then on the offensive end it's like he made a he i think he had like what two points like he made one shot and it's like bro if you're not going to be able to you know make shots consistently on the offensive end you have to be able to give your all on the defensive end and that wasn't really happening either so caleb martin was really like a zero on the court tonight he didn't really provide anything and that that really really hurt us um and you know um the bench don't even get me started on the bench man um Struess had 22 last game i don't i know he did not have anything close to that this game that's not his fault he's not a natural sixth man you're not going to put the ball in his hands and expect him to ignite a team he's a he's an off the ball player so you know you're not going to expect Struess to have 22 every time um i thought vincent should have been in the game um, a lot more, especially in the first half. I don't really know why we didn't play him in the first half a lot. Um, Duncan got his six minutes. That's whatever. But the two guys that really frustrated me on the bench, Dwayne Dedman. Oh my gosh, bro! Like whenever when when Bam was not on the court, we got killed. And it's like, bro, when because Bam was in foul trouble. Let's be honest. And he picked up two quick fouls in the first quarter, and then he picked up his third foul um, early in the second uh, in the second half. And um, and and he also picked up his fourth foul on the illegal screen, but and any technical. But whenever he was not on the floor, bro, we were getting cooked. Like we could not get a stop to save our lives when Bam Adebayo was not on the floor. They made their twenty to six run. That run that they made at the end of the third. That really, really was big for them because we had taken the lead, if I'm not mistaken, um, in the third quarter. And then they made like a 20, 22 to six run or something like that. Like that was huge. Like that run by the Celtics, like um, that really gave them momentum. And that was with Bam on the bench. Um, and I'm pretty sure Jimmy was also on the bench at that, at that period of time. Um, here's the thing, our rotation, um, at the start of the game, every time Struess comes in, Jimmy's the one to go out. And Jimmy's always the first starter to be subbed out. Um, and it didn't look good. Like, I would like Jimmy to play with the second unit a little more. Like, I don't know why we, we take him out as early as we do because he's our best player. It's like, you know, he just makes a, a, things a lot easier for our team. So um, I think we should keep him in the game a little longer than we usually do um, when we make that first substitution. But um the bench was so disappointing. Deadman, again, like I said, was a foul machine. This dude, like, he took a fadeaway. Bro, I, 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 I lost it. That that was, like, the one time in this game where I was like, bro, I was so close to turning this game off when Dwayne Deadman took that fadeaway like he was Kobe. That was crazy. Um, Highsmith, he just did not look... He, he looked lost, bro. Let's be honest. Haywood Highsmith's not a center. 
I don't know why we were playing him at center. Like, I understand both Bam and Deadman are in foul trouble. If you want some insurance for that, you play Highsmith for a couple of minutes, take some time off the clock. But it's like, bro, he's not a center. Why are we playing him at center if he's not a center? He's 6'6". We literally have Nikola Jovic, who's a 6'11". Uh, he's, he's a 6'11", 4 slash 5 man, sitting on our bench. And somehow, Spo is playing Highsmith over him as a center. Like that, like I love Spo. Spo's the best coach in the NBA, but bro, that was confusing. Like, I, I, why do we never play our rookies, bro? Like we're playing, we're playing Haywood Highsmith at this at the, at the center position, and we're expecting not to get killed on the boards. Like, our whole team is six six and under when when when, when Highsmith is on the court. Him and Deadman were, they 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 really pissed me off today, bro. Deadman especially with his fouls and Highsmith. Um, I know it's not Highsmith's fault like that he's made to play center, but he just did not look good out there. He just looked completely lost and out of place. Um, I think that was the biggest reason we lost the game, bro. Because the minutes that we played without Bam, like those minutes were dreadful. And like that's when the Celtics made their runs is whenever Bam was not on the floor. The good thing is that the Celtics seem to not have an answer for Bam. Um, I know Robert Williams is out, but... Um, even though Robert Williams did a good job on Bam, I think that was just more on Bam for not shooting. I think, you know, whenever Bam was aggressive, we saw it in game seven. I mean, he, Robert Williams wasn't really a big problem for him to handle. So um, when, when we face this team again, Bam is going to be big. Bam is going to be big for sure. Um, we just have to play a lot harder, um, especially on the defensive end after we secure a stop. We just have to be committed to getting the defensive rebound, bro. Like, um, and even like getting stops, like there were periods of time where we looked really good defensively, but there were also periods of time where, you know, we were getting picked apart. Like someone was always open in the corner and they were getting good shot, especially in the first quarter. The first quarter, the Celtics were getting a ton of good shots. And I know we took the lead early, but I mean, if they had knocked down some of those open shots, this game could have been, you know, even um, more ugly from the start because the amount of open shots they were getting, um, was was really really crazy to me like how, how many open shots someone was always open in the corner and it was like bro like our our rotations were just messed up but um yeah it's frustrating it's frustrating because we're 0-2 now um it's, it does not get any easier bro we, we played the raptors on a back-to-back -back. we all know the raptors are a very gritty feisty team they just played against the brooklyn nets and they just lost um on a, in a very close affair royce o'neill made a three to ice the game but um Toronto is always a team that's going to give us problems because Toronto is very similar to us. They play hard. They play scrappy um, and, and they just play up to their competition. So um, we're going to have to be really, really good against Toronto. Um, I'm pretty sure this is an away game, but I, I think we also played them at home after this. So um, it's a back to back against uh, Toronto tomorrow. And uh, we play Toronto again after that. So um, hopefully we can bounce back. We, we we desperately need to win. We cannot afford to go one and three. I'm sorry. Be going going one and three to start the season will be a disaster. So um, I am praying that we get a win tomorrow. Tomorrow is a must win game. Like it's 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 the most important game of the season so far because we cannot afford to go down zero and three to start the season. And hopefully um, we can bounce back in the in the win a winning effort. And everyone plays committed defense throughout the game. We're not playing for, you know, periodically good defense and then hanging our heads some other times. Like, we need to be playing high energy defense in basketball every single possession. Um, and unfortunately, with the team that we have constructed, it's not the most talented on paper. So we're, we're going to be hanging on for dear life against some of these really good teams. And um, we're going to have to make sure that we're committed on the defensive end in order to make these games close. So um, tomorrow night, like I said, big game against the Raptors. Very, very feisty, uh, uh, gritty team that they have over there. Um, let's go out and get the dub, man, because we really, really need one. We cannot afford to go down 0-3. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this whole situation, man. I'll see y'all later as always. Peace.